Hi, I'm bartender Oliver Holt, and today I'm going to be making a sweet vermouth using products from Farm One. Um, first things first, what is a sweet vermouth? It's a it's an infused and then fortified wine. I typically use white wine, but you can use rosé as well. Um, and I have all my products ahead of me, so let's dive right in. Uh, the wine that you want to choose, basically you want it to be something that's on the lighter and drier style, something like a Pinot Grigio or a Sauvignon Blanc. I also like coastal wines from Portugal and Spain. Uh, basically, you just don't want anything that has too much uh, strong flavor, like a Chardonnay or something with oxidation or anything like that, because it's going to fight the other uh, ingredients. Um, so I just got a bottle of Albarino from Portugal here. This was like 10 bucks or something. It's very cheap. Um, what I'm going to be doing for this particular uh, recipe is a whole bottle's worth. Um, but you can very easily cut everything down by a quarter if you don't want to go through a whole bottle. Um, so the first two steps are different levels of heat infusion. For our first stage of infusion, we're going to be using citrus and our spices, and then we'll kill the heat and add our herbs. For the spices, I have juniper berries, cardamom, allspice, clove, and star anise. For my citrus, I have an orange and a lemon, but you can use a grapefruit if you'd like as well. I'm going to go a little bit heavier on the orange. And I put on the heat. I'm putting this on a low heat so that it can just have a simmer and get to know the other ingredients. While I'm doing that, I need to caramelize my honey. You can also use sugar, but I find that honey is, is much easier to use. I've got about 50 grams here, or sorry, 50 milliliters, which is about two fluid ounces. While the wine is simmering with the uh, initial ingredients, I'm caramelizing my honey here. You can use regular honey or a simple syrup, but um, I really want that sort of raw honey, rough around the edges uh, flavor. Um, and you get that just by cooking honey on medium high heat and constantly stirring it so that nothing sticks and it doesn't burn. You're gonna be cooking it until all the water bubbles out and then the surface sugars are allowed to caramelize. So it's starting to bubble now, as you can see. Uh, I'm just, the most important thing is to continue stirring so that nothing burns. I'm just waiting for the water to, to bubble out and as soon as it starts to smell nutty and fragrant, that's when I know I'm done. So this is basically where I want it. It's definitely uh, begun to reduce a little bit, so it's nice and gloopy, which is great. And you'll see once the water, uh, once the bubbles die off, that it's a much deeper amber color than it was when we first started cooking it. Yeah, look at that. That's what we want. So I've had this going for about 10 to 15 minutes and basically I'm just getting a, 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 a nice infusion here without overdoing it and getting any bitter elements from the baking spices. Um, so at this point, I'm going to turn off the heat. I'm going to add my herbs and I'm going to cover it back up and let the residual heat take over. Think of this like a tea. We don't want to aggressively cook the ingredients, but we do want to get them infused into the liquid as much as possible. It's been about five minutes now. Um, you could keep going if you want to, but I'm happy with the way that this tastes. So I've got my infused wine, I've got my caramelized honey, and I'm just going to mix it in. Okay, so let's talk about infusion. Uh, I'm going to use three spirits here. I want something brown because I want toasty, uh, sort of more earthy flavors. I want the higher notes from gin. You could use, you know, something like rum or tequila, but I do think that gin really sort of um, cuts a lot of uh, corners in a really good way. Uh, and then I'm going to do something uh, fortified and oxidative, something like port or sherry or Madeira, something sweet and caramelly, something to sort of marry the, the ingredients that we already have together. So I'm going to do 75 milliliters of gin, 50 milliliters of rye, at about 25 milliliters of my port, in this case. Now it's really important to taste as you go. I've done this a few times, so I, I know what my measurement should be. 
Um, but but if you're going to be doing this at home, I, what I really recommend doing is just doing a bit at a time and tasting it and tasting it and tasting it. Yeah, that's that's pretty much where I want that to be. Might add a splash of port. It's important to note that the fortification and sweetening process is really more art than science. It's worth tasting it as you go along. In fact, I, if it's your first time, you definitely shouldn't do it any other way. Don't just add the ingredients. Um, and if you want it to be a little bit more sweet, then add your uh, fortified wine or your honey. Um, if you want sort of a bit more of a pop, um, then you want higher notes from gin. And if you think it's just sort of like lacking depth and structure, then give it a bit more of the whiskey. This, on the other hand, Tastes pretty perfect to me. If there's one thing that I could leave you with, one lesson to take away from this, other than the general instruction, it's um, not to stick to one script. It's important to experiment. I mean, I, I gave you a recipe that is a bit more on the floral side and it's much more herbaceous and it's uh, lighter, but you know, uh, use your favorite spirits, use your favorite wine, just really mess around with different things, mess around with cooking times um, and, and, and see which you, way you prefer to do it because there's really no wrong way to do it. Now you can bottle this up and keep it in the fridge and it should be just as delicious for well over a week, if it lasts that long.